What's going on everybody? Welcome back to JJD TV. I'm your host Josh and today we have some nice little transfer rumors to talk with you guys about today. We've signed a new player. The second little debate is that we're targeting a striker, which I'll let you guys know my opinions on. We'll hear what you guys have to say about that as well. And of course, the future of Dehoud is up in the air and we're just going to break it all down right now. So hopefully you guys have some time to sit in for a little live session today because we had some breaking news and the breaking news was obviously the signing of young Kuwabali from PSG. I'm going to go through some articles with you guys, talk about basically my thoughts and opinions on it, see what you guys are thinking, and hopefully it'll be a fun little episode. So welcome in everybody. Let's get things started. I'm going to be quick, precise about this, and we'll be addressing as many comments as I can along the way. we got a few of you guys here that are saying, yo, let's go. Um, Julian says, does this mean we won't be signing a central defender in the summer? Uh, no, definitely not. At least I hope not. I'm pretty sure that this is the prospect that we've been looking for, a good left-footed uh, center back. I think he'll fit in pretty nicely. He's still very young. There's no way he'll be able to basically be a starter for us. We need a starting center back. So, I mean, I even put a tweet up and said, excellent signing, big W, as long as it's followed up with a a uh, Maxence Lacroix, you know, something like that. We also have another video dropping today too, another one that was a nicely edited video from Producer T, so you guys have got, got double the fun today. but. We had to go live today mainly because, you know, we, we, signed, we signed a player. So I'm going to go through the little article and tell you guys about my opinions on it. Um, I, I don't know how to pronounce his name 100% properly. If, if, if I pronounce it incorrectly, be sure to let me know. I'm pronouncing his first name as Sumela. Sum, Sumela. I don't know. I haven't. I haven't actually heard it out loud. But we're gonna pretend that I'm not ignorant and I know the name. And if you guys want to correct me and I'm wrong, let me know. So it says sent French central defender Sumala Kuwabali will play for Bundesliga club Borussia Dortmund from the start of the 2021-2022 season. The 17-year-old is regarded as one of the brightest prospects in the youth academy of French top-flight outfit Paris Saint Germain. Kumali has not yet played at senior level, but he has trained regularly with PSG's first squad this season and represents France at the U18 level and is currently recovering from a knee injury. So Kumali will put pen to paper to a long-term deal with BBB, which I heard is a 3 plus 2 deal, so 3 years with the optional 2, so basically he signed a 5-year contract with Borussia Dortmund, and he said that he's absolutely delighted at the prospect of playing in such a traditional steep club i and he's grateful for the training he's received at psg but he's believed that this move is the best for me as it is for many players especially young players from psg it's just what they do he said he had other, other offers but once he spoke to the management at bbb he immediately knew that this was the right club and he can't wait to get started with his new club so that is pretty cool that is pretty cool uh i, I see a lot of similarities in in basically the look of him into basically like a zagadu for example there's been so many talented young French center backs or defenders that came from PSG and made their way on over to the Bundesliga and I don't think Kubali will be any exception. He's left footed, but I find that very interesting considering that we have Zagadou, another young French left center back. But given our season, I think you guys can agree that there's nothing wrong with getting another body in there. We're good at developing young players and he seems to be a very highly regarded young center back, so it makes me very excited to see what he can do. I by no means think he's going to start basically next season i think he's gonna potentially try to develop a little bit maybe with our second team and especially if our second team gets promoted i mean that, that'll be a good opportunity but as i say that i don't know if he'll even be eligible i can't remember what the the age category is there but he definitely will be integrated into brucey e. dorman because he was being integrated into psg which shows that he has a lot of potential the center back position for us has been one that's definitely been very light over the years and with a couple of pieces maybe leaving the club coming in i think this is a big big signing I was expecting a center back prospect signing and we got exactly that in Kubali. The rumors were going around for a while now and it's been solidified. It needs to be followed up, however, with a uh, with another center back signing, Maxence Lacroix or uh, Milinkovic are my two main ones for me, but one of them have to come into the club 100% because we can't basically rely on a, a kid who hasn't made his senior debut yet to be able to step into our back line. But it is still a great signing nonetheless and I can't wait to hear what some of you guys have to say about it. I also read an article that said that he was basically shadowed by, or he was shadowing Kempembe. So, I mean, another left-footed young center back out of PSG who's had a very successful career so far. So I think it's very cool that he was able to kind of mimic what he's doing. I feel like Zagadou could be a bit of a role model. And of course, Hummels, mainly because, I mean, obviously Zagadou is a very similar build 
same French left back. It's left left footed uh, central defender. But I'm excited by the, the signing, and it's our first signing and the first signing of the Marco Rosa era. So it's very cool. It's there. Agent says, yo, Riley says, hey. Payne's here and says, this guy will fix our defense. Trust me. Also, I wish that the draw for Real Madrid or Porto so we can qualify easier. I wouldn't say that he's going to fix our defense, man. I, I mean, just because given his age and he hasn't even had a, a senior debut, he's he's a prospect. He, he's young. He's going to be coming in. Um, I don't think he's going to be becoming a starter next season. I really don't. And I honestly hope not because just he hasn't even had a senior debut, but he's a very, very promising young center back, which is fantastic. We've seen the way that we can develop some of those players. So for me, it's a great signing, but I still, it needs to be followed up with a, a big center back signing like Lacroix or Milinkovic, in my opinion. Jordan says that Kubali is similar to Zagadou, and I totally agree. I think Zagadou is probably a little bit stockier. That's the, the main thing. So I think Kubali may be a little bit quicker than, than Zagadou, but all in all, yeah, French, left foot, young. I, I totally see what's going on there. Um, here we go. A good signing says Riley. I, I think I think it'll be a good sign, man. I think it, I think it will be the way that we can develop players and the way some of these young PSG prospects come to the Bundesliga and shine. It, it shows nothing but good things for this club. So I totally agree with that. Uh, but there are two other things that we're talking about today. It's not just Cool Bali. That's the main one, the first Marco Rosa signing. But the other article that I do have for you guys, which I will will bring up, is Divock Origi. And I thought that that was kind of surprising. We're gonna bring up the article. I've, I found on that one. Uh, I don't know how I feel about it. I really don't. I I don't mind Origi. It's just, for me, he's not really the signing I wanted to go for. But it basically said that Brucey Dortmund's look, looking to strike a bargain deal with Divock Origi. And this right here, that looks painful on the eyes. I don't know what you guys think, but for me, that is ridiculous, and I don't think that it's going to happen. Dortmund eye Origi as Holland replacement. That makes me want to puke in my mouth. That is not true. That is that is not who we would be looking for to replace Erling Holland, and it would put an awful taste in every Brucey Dortmund fan thinking that Divock Origi is going to replace Holland. Not get it in my face. I don't want to believe it. However, we do potentially need a backup striker, so I could see Origi coming in for a potential backup striker role. That is about it. I mean, I don't even want to acknowledge the fact that they think he's going to replace Holland because that's that's just not true. He's been rumored to be around 20 mil and the bargain deal they're saying is going to go down to about 12, which arguably, I mean, I guess it's not the worst deal in the world, but but yeah, Agent says Origi is okay as a backup striker, um, <laughs> but no way, Jose. Yeah, I mean, I, I would personally just stay away from Origi. I, I really would. I would look for Someone who can be a little bit more versatile, and I know I mention his name all the time, but someone like like Malin, who can play out on the wings, and when you need him to, can play up front. I wouldn't put a lot of eggs in baskets for young strikers, because considering we have Tigas and we have Mukuku who can go up there, why bring in why bring in Origi? What's he gonna do? We're gonna play him in front and to stop the development of Tigas or to stop the development of Mukuku? No, we're not. So it seems like a waste, and he's not replacing Holland. Not not a chance. So. I, I say this is about a 2 out of 10, and basically it's going to happen. There's no reason we need to sign him. He's not replacing Holland. I'd rather honestly start Tigas or Makuku than, than go for Origi, but that's that's what I'm talking about of, of a signing, would be someone like Gonzalez or Malin who can play versatile, and if you need to, they have the experience to get the job done up, up front as well. So yeah, so I don't know. It's a bit of a ridiculous one for me. Julian says, yo, Josh, is this signing indicator that we won't sign a big central defender in the summer window? I don't think so. Uh, and I desperately hope not. I think that Lacroix is the main man. We're having a transfers episode dropping in, in a few hours from now, so that'll be a more in-depth one. But for me, the way that things are going, I think the rumors linking to Milinkovic are slowly de decreasing. You're seeing more clubs like United, some of the big Premier League teams, even teams in Spain are going after Milinkovic, while Lacroix has come out and said basically he wants to go to Dortmund. He can see himself going there. The uh, head coach there at, at Wolfsburg is looking to potentially leave, which has really turned off Lacroix. And basically, he's looking to make that jump to a team like Borussia Dortmund. And I think that it makes a little bit more sense because, I mean, he's already got the Bundesliga experience. He's young, talented, French. Apparently, we love that. So I don't think it's an indicator. I think we were going to sign two center backs regardless. Some people have said, we'll sign Milinkovic and Lacroix. Not a chance considering, you know, money. But... All, all in all, um, no. I think that there's going to be a strong, strong opportunity that we're going to be signing signing our uh, young player here. 
Not sure what's going on with our Wi-Fi. I hope my stream did not break. But yeah, I don't think... Um, do not talk about Origi. <laughs> Uh, I'm just going to pull up YouTube because I'm not fully sure if uh, our stream died or not. And if it did, I'm going to be absolutely livid. If my okay. Was no, this. maybe not. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. It looked like my stream might have died. But, but maybe not. We're going to find out. And we're going to find out in like two seconds if you guys can still see me. Let me know in the in the chat if you can. Okay, you can. I don't know what's going on. My phone just kind of kind of freaked out. But I guess we're I guess we're okay. I guess we're okay. But yeah, I I personally I don't pause know. that. All right, we're fine. I, I see us still signing another player. I definitely do. But we'll, we'll move it on to our third little column here, the third part of this uh, of this stream, and it's one that I don't know how to feel about. I'm I'm feeling devastated. I'm feeling a little bit gutted by the same situation, but. I don't blame these clubs. Why wouldn't you want to monitor Dahoud when he's performing like an absolute beauty? An absolute beauty. Um, make sure everyone has subscribed. Josh is 30 away from 2K. Yeah, guys, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, we are close to 2K, so you know. Yeah, thanks to Agents for the big, the big shout out. Um, I am gonna be going live tomorrow morning. It's gonna be painful. I have to get up at like six, but I will be going live for the draw. Uh, and it should be fun. It should be fun. So if you guys want to join us for the draw, see my reactions and, and see my, my little predictions and who I want to see, then be sure to join us tomorrow morning. It should be fun. But but yeah, so I, I don't think that's an indication that Kubali will be our only center back signing. I do think Lacroix will be the main man, but I will talk about that a little more in the episode dropping later today. Max, I got to bring this up because I totally agree. I would hate Origi. I would too. And I don't think it's going to happen. I really don't. It, yeah, it's just, it's ridiculous. Jay says, hope you're doing well, Josh. Kubali looks like a decent talent. PSG usually develop good players. Origi, not a chance. <laughs> He's good, though. Yes, Jay, 100% agree. I am excited about Kubali. He will not be our our main man next season. I do think that Lacroix will be coming in. That's just my personal opinion. And yes, Origi, I think it's, it's BS. It's it's not going to happen. There's no reason it's going to happen. It's just one of those one of those rumors. A backup striker, I can maybe see, but replacing Holland, no, get it out of my face. But... Uh, whom do you want BBB to draw in the UEFA Champions League? Um, I'll talk about it a little bit tomorrow morning before the stream when I'm exhausted. But pro I mean, obviously Porto comes to mind or Liverpool. I think Liverpool would be a fun one. But but yeah, this is the Dahoud rumor. This is the one that's making me a little bit scared. I'm not sure very very much what to think. But it says that according to the Daily Mail, that Tottenham are one of the several Premier League clubs that are monitoring Borussia Dortmund star. Dude. And Chelsea, City, Everton are all keeping tabs on him as well, as there's just one year remaining on his contract. The 25-year-old has signed for the club in 2017. And fun fact that Tuchel actually is the one who signed him and then had the falling out in the club and left. So the player who, the coach who brought Dehoud to the club didn't actually get to manage him at all. And every other manager kind of came in and Dehoud maybe wasn't the the player that they really thought they were going to get or player that they needed, which maybe also has an indication of why he struggled a little bit to break into the team. But it does make sense why Chelsea is monitoring Dehoud considering Tuchel was the guy who was basically brought him to Borussia Dortmund. And despite struggling to establish himself, he has gone on to be a mainstay in the side now, playing alongside a deep midfielder role with a good partnership with Delaney. Yeah, he's very important. And why go out and spend a lot of money when we could just basically have our boy Dehoud? So I don't think that... We should sell him, man. I think that we, we should sign him. I think that it's going to, A, stop us from spending a lot of money to replace him because, I mean, seeing the emerging talent that he is and what he brings to this side, going out and replacing a player like him is going to cost a lot of money. And why do it when we can just tie him down to a long-term deal? So that's very easy easy opinion about me. But Payne says, we need Mullen, bro. 100% agree with you, not Origi. Origi is great, sort of. I don't really even agree with that. But in my opinion, Mullen is better for sure. Yep, 100%. 100%. Mullen is the way to go. Um, Julian says, oh, where did that message go? Tapsoba. Um, I do like Tapsoba. I do. I, I haven't heard any, I haven't really heard any rumors linking him to Dortmund. So that's why I haven't really been mentioning him, but he is a very similar profile to me like Lacroix is. It just Lacroix basically came out and said he wants to play for, uh, for Dortmund, plus the rumors that are going wrong going on with Wolfsburg's manager potentially leaving and even taking over Gladbach. Uh, so I just think he's a little bit more realistic signing, and I think he's honestly a little bit more defensively sturdy, but I do like Tapsoba. Um, 
This is the, yeah, this is the first signing under the Marco Rosa era. I don't know how much Marco Rosa had to do with this signing, but it is going down as a Marco Rosa signing. So if the hood leaves, that opens the door for Florian not Neuhaus. No, unfortunately it doesn't. We have no money, man. Like people keep messaging me on, on Twitter and Instagram. My boy Jay coming at me with a lot of transfer rumors and stuff, but it's, it's sad. We don't have a lot of money that we're going to be able to spend. I know whether we sell Sancho or we don't, we're, it, it still isn't going to give us a ton of money to spend. I realistically see us signing four people. I saw us signing a prospect. That's done. A center back, a winger, and who else were I going to sign? Oh, and a keeper. And a keeper. I see us signing four players. I, I really do. And I, and I think they're going to have to be very strategic signings. Uh, don't think that Lacroix's thirty million price tag is is easy. That's a that's a huge price tag for what Dortmund's willing to spend. I hope we do break our transfer record for him, just so Sherla isn't our record right now. That's just my my opinion. But um, but no, we will not be able to sign Florian Neuhaus. There's there's absolutely no way because even if Dehoud leaves, I mean, a I mean, yes, he's he's growing his stock, but he's got one year left on his deal. So I bet you if we did sell him, we'd get fifteen max. We will not be signing a crazy amount of players. They will be strategic deals, and a lot of it will also depend on who we do sell. So uh, I just because of the way that Dortmund runs the club, the way that the COVID has affected everything, yeah, I mean, we're in a hole, and selling Sancho is basically going to put us to, to even. We're not a club that likes to spend a ton of money that way. So yeah, don't don't think that if we sell to who Neuhaus is the option, more than likely it'll be someone who will be about that 15 to 20 replacement as well, which we might as well just re-signed. Our boy, uh, <laughs> our boy, Dehoud. I thought you meant Kubali. No, no, no. No, not that Kubali. We can't afford him. Um, you better get that Dehoud kit before he leaves. No, no, I said I was going to get the Dehoud kit if he stays. Dehoud is signing until 2025. Heard it here first. I I agree, man. I agree that there's a good chance that we resign him. Like, the reasons I said, we're not going to be interested in going out and dropping $40 million on a Neuhaus replacement when we could just resign Dehoud. But we'll have to see. Uh, Lacroix is a CB from Wolfsburg. Yes, he is. No, Josh's favorite player. Do not take him away. Yeah, uh, I hope they don't. I really hope they don't. We'll have to wait and see what happens. But um, but yeah, we do have a cool little transfer episode. I, I uh, took the community board's post and, and made a huge long transfers episode that will be coming out later today. So hopefully you guys will enjoy that. And we'll see exactly who I'm I'm thinking of uh, thinking of signing. But yes, I see a big big uh, spam there of goalkeeper and I can't agree with you more goalkeeper center back winger is exactly what we need Neuhaus isn't good for us he's expensive and is already depth in midfield yeah we're not going to sign him mainly because I don't think we have that relationship with uh, Gladback anymore to be able to pull off a signing like that um Josh we ain't selling to who now no chance except uh we want to keep him I think he should stay too man I don't know how this will develop I think that Seeing a player emerge the way he is and becoming such an important player of the team, it would be ridiculous to sell him now, especially, like I said, one year left on his contract. He's not going to be expensive to sell. Teams will probably be willing to spend, like I said, at the most $15 million on a player like him. So why not just uh, re-sign him? He's, he's shown that he can play, and I think he'll fit well in Rose's uh, formation next season. Josh, how much value of money do you think we'll get for selling Berkey? Under 10 if I'm being completely honest. Ten, probably, probably around 10 it, it'll be interesting. I, I'm thinking of doing an episode where I'll talk about some of the prices of players I think may be sold this summer, as well as some of the players I'm thinking of bringing in. Jay, shout out to him, gave me that idea to do that. I think it will be uh, will be fun to take a look at, but uh, like I said, I, I can't wait to see what you guys think about our transfers episode today. I took a lot of the names you were talking about, realistic ones that came from the community board, and I made, well, Producer T put together a nice little transfers episode that will be dropping today, so hopefully you guys can put in some of your... Uh, opinions there which goalkeeper should you buy next season stay tuned for the episode that we have dropping today my friend i go over a lot a lot of different options from you guys and you'll see exactly kind of what i was thinking but the three names that weren't on that transfers episode were the ones i was talking about today and quickly going over it one more time was the first signing under marco rosa kubali young 17 year old french center back left footed very similar profile to zagadu i think he's an excellent prospect signing exactly the type of prospect signing i think dortmund wanted to get they nipped him in the butt they got him and it's a perfect signing i give it a pretty much a, a 4.5 out of 5 as long as we're not banking on him to be a starter next season which i don't think we are and we sign another center back then it is a huge 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 w for for that signing the second one we're talking about is Origi and the fact that we don't want him. No reason to sign him. Stay as far away as for that transfer we possibly can. 
We have backup center back or backup strikers in Tigas and Mukuku. T- there's just no reason. And he's if you think that he's a replacement for Holland, then you are absolutely crazy. I give that one honestly a zero out of five in the way that it sh- it should happen because I hope it does not. And we'll have to wait and see what what transpires through that because I'm hoping. Origi goes elsewhere. And the final one was Dahoud, being targeted by pretty much every big Premier League club. Rightfully so. Our boy's on fire. But to replace a player like Dahoud is going to cost us 30 to 40 mil money we do not have. We have the goal- goalkeeper situation to figure out another center back and a winger. We don't have the money to put into a central midfielder. Plus, we have Chan, Dahoud, Bellingham, Delaney, and Witzel. Man, we are fine at our center, center mid, center defensive mids area. So, Sign our boy to a long-term deal, and as soon as it's announced, I will get our Dahoo jersey and run a little contest for you guys. So yeah, but a lot of the questions you guys are asking about other transfers, they will be mentioned in the transfers episode that is dropping today. So I really hope you guys like that. I love doing transfers episodes, getting the uh, rumor mill spinning. So hopefully you guys do enjoy that as well. And yes, I will be streaming tomorrow morning. So you guys better thank me for it. I am not a morning person. Not at all. I'm not a morning person whatsoever. And I'm going to get my butt out of bed at 6 a.m., get ready for the stream, try and put on a face, and then we will watch together and make sure that Brucey e. Dortmund hopefully gets a good draw. Hopefully gets a dr- good draw. So keep an eye out for the transfers episode that's dropping today. I hope you guys enjoy that as well. And let me know what you think about all the transfers we touched on. And of course, uh, yeah, join me tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. For those of you guys who, uh, who want to, hopefully... Uh, <laughs> 6 a.m. Josh is going to be in a whole other mood. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to be tired, man. But you guys will be here to keep to keep me up. But yes, I I will go over all, all my uh, all my little predictions about who I do want, who I don't want. I'll rate, rate them in order. We'll go through them together. It should be a fun little stream. I am looking forward to it. So hopefully that'll, you know, wake me up a little bit. But yeah, all in all, it should be fun. And, so, and the last comment of the day says, 15 million for Berkey or the exit that way. I don't think we'll get... Uh, I don't think we'll get 15, but you never know. I think we'll get most mostly likely 10, but yeah, hopefully that's uh, you guys enjoyed this little little live here on uh, on Josh's lunch, and you have another transfer episode to keep an eye on for today. And then I'll hopefully see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning. So a lot of you guys, it may not be tomorrow morning, but for you North Americans, if I'm getting up, you better join me, and we better hope the boys go on. So thank you guys all for joining me on today's little uh, transfer episode, and welcome our new signing Kubali to the squad. Can't wait to see what he can do. He's uh, got an injury he's going through right now, so as soon as he gets back from that injury, he'll be able to come and join join the boys, and we'll see what he's made of. So thank you guys, everyone, for joining this episode. Uh, be sure to keep an eye for uh, the transfers one, and we'll see you tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time.